guys, Jill here from Ask a Vet Tech. Today we're going to be talking about fleas. No one wants to talk about them, but everybody's worried about them. So let's get into the nitty gritty. The first symptom you're going to notice is itching. Your pet will be scratching. They'll be digging places. They'll be scratching places that you didn't know they could reach. <laughs> Most common spots for fleas to hide out would be at the base of the tail and by the ears, under the collar, if they wear a sweater under the sweater because the fleas don't want to be disturbed. So if you scratch and they can't actually be injured, that's the best place for them to hide out. You could be seeing them chewing. It's almost like a little nibble, 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 nibble because they're trying to actually bite that flea and get rid of that sensation of the bite. Sometimes they will like rub their face along the carpet or along the chair or along the couch. It's nice and long and they can get a good scratch. These tiny little pests are almost microscopic. If you see them though, see something just like whoop, jump, probably a flea. These fleas can get on you as well and bite you. They're not subjective to just pets. They won't live on you, but they will bite you. Let's talk about the fleas life cycle because that is important in order to break it so that they don't live in your home. It takes one female flea to create an army of fleas that can live in your home and on your pets. One flea jumps on Fido. Not a big deal, right? I mean, it's got one flea, just one. I just saw one. So that one flea grabs a snack of blood meal, gets enough blood meal from your pet to start to lay eggs. How many eggs do you say? I mean, a chicken lays one a day, right? Cause it's not one egg. It can be 20 to a hundred eggs a day. It's kind of a big deal. Where do these eggs go? These eggs are not stored on your pet. They fall into your carpet onto your couch, into your bed. I only have hardwood floors into the little cracks between the wood. Oh yeah, and they can get into your car because you know, everybody wants to take them for a pup cup. With a perfect environment, these fleas can just start to hatch. That seems like a problem. How quick? Two to five days those eggs can hatch. Okay, so if there's like 40 eggs, no big deal. One flea. 40 eggs, <laughs> seems manageable. How am I gonna get rid of them? <sighs> then they hatch and turn into larva. Ooh, think of that, like a little ooh, in your carpet. Gross, right? You might ask, what does this larva feed on? It feeds on flea poop. Have you ever heard of the term flea dirt? Ever wonder what that is? Like, are fleas dirty? Do they bring dirt with them? The answer is no. Flea dirt is actually flea poop. Gross, I know. It's digested blood meal. So every time that that one flea eats a meal, she's gonna poop. And after she poops, that dirt feeds those larvae. Those larvae live on flea dirt. If you could just smush them at that stage, that would be ideal because they're not very protected. They're so tiny. It takes approximately one to 10 days for the feeding to happen and then to wrap into a cocoon so that this larva is completely protected. When you think of larvae, you think of butterflies and they're beautiful when they come out. <laughs> Not the same for fleas. This is the pupa stage. So it takes five to 20 days for them to hatch out. And guess what they hatch out into? A flea! And then this cycle starts again. So when you have one flea, I say you have a three month problem because it's very hard to break that cycle, but it's not impossible. Now that we're past the life cycle stage, let's get into how we get rid of them. Step one, identify that you even have fleas. How do you know? I mean, your pet scratching could just be a little bit of an allergy or he rolled in the dirt and he's scratchy from that. How do I know? There's a simple way to tell if you have fleas or you just have dirt on your pet. You're gonna need a flea comb. So I'll get a little closer for you. The next thing you're gonna need piece of paper, towel. You want something that can absorb water and absorb dirt. So what are you going to do? Take your flea comb, comb your pet really, really good. I want you to get a bunch of junk in there. Okay. I'm going to comb my dog and I'll be right back. Stay. Okay. I'm back, but I'm going to get really close so you can see all the dirt and stuff in there. Here's the other side. Lots of dirt, lots of dander. So you want a lot of fur in there. Okay. You're going to take your paper towel then. Here's a bowl of water. You're just gonna dip it in there and I want it to be wet and then I want you to wring it out. These are Viva paper towels, they're pretty awesome. You're gonna open up the paper towel like this. So you've got the wet spot right here. I like to put it between like my thumb so I can squeeze it like that. Take our flea comb 
and then we're going to just kind of put it in here like this and then we're going to pinch that stuff off okay so your flea comb should be clean afterward and then i want you to kind of mat that stuff together okay and what i want you to look for my pets don't have fleas but if they did have fleas there would be like this little brown spackly stuff it almost looks like rust rust is just digested blood okay after this even if you have fleas just close it up discard you want to close it up though because if there's a flea in there it's going to jump back out places where you could comb for that sample would be charlie come here charlie is going to be our model so spots to comb would be base of the tail so like the top part of his tail he doesn't have a collar on but around the base of the neck anywhere all the way around under the flap of the ears like right in here or maybe the armpits. Charlie is such a good model. Okay, that's it for Charlie. He's going away. Say bye. If your dog has very long hair or it's matted, don't use that flea comb to try to comb those mats because you are going to make a very unhappy dog. They don't love that flea comb. It does kind of pull and it does pull the hair out. So just be cautious of that. It's very itchy. They probably will scratch while you're taking that sample. Those spots are really hard for your pet to reach. That's why the fleas like to hide out there. Have you ever seen a dog try to itch the base of their tail? Not many can reach it. If your pet did have fleas, you can do something very quick to relieve the itching. So the bath, let's talk about that for a second. There's multiple shampoos out there that say, oh, for fleas, use this to kill fleas. It's great. It usually does kill the fleas that day. The thing that I prefer to use is I prefer to use just plain old Dawn dish soap. This is the Dawn Ultra. The little duck on there. That's how you know it's safe for your dogs. It removes all oil and debris and grease and that kind of stuff from your pet. So if they rolled in something outside, you could use that in a quick pinch for a shampoo. If your pet has fleas, the first thing I want you to do is to get them in the bathtub. The first thing you're going to need to do is take off all their clothes, their harness, their collar, sweaters, vests, any of that stuff, and get it in the laundry before the bath. When you get your pet in the tub, the first couple things you want to do is you want to take some of that Dawn and you want to put it in your hand, a big huge lather of it, rub them together, and then where the collar goes on your pet, I want you to just rub Dawn dish soap in that area without water. I don't want to be wet. I want them to just, I want you to do that because it's going to coat the flea traffic from them coming from the body of the dog upward to the head. It's much harder to remove them from the head. Okay. I want you to slowly wet your pet. You're going to notice a couple things, especially if they have fleas. You may notice that water is tinged red or brown or rusty, and it's not just dirty. That's okay. That means you're rinsing away all that flea poop that we want to get rid of so it doesn't feed the larva. After you get your dog really, really wet, don't forget the tail, don't forget the feet. We're going to scrub the body of the dog really, really well. Lots of bubbles lathering up. Then the key is to wait. Give it a few minutes. Talk to your dog, pet your dog. No rinsing yet. Don't rinse yet. Why? Because the Dawn dish soap encapsulates the flea. So here's Mr. Flea walking along. Dawn dish soap. He can't breathe, he dies. That's how it goes. After you let your pet soak for a little bit, I want you to give them one last rigorous rub down to make sure we get all that stuff off there. But if your pet has open sores, be very careful because it will be sensitive. All right, now that we've got the whole body of the dog scrubbed up and it's all lathered up, we're gonna wash the head. From the spot where we put the Dawn dish soap, we're gonna get that wet. And then we're gonna use that soap to wash the head of the dog. So, two things. Do not get this soap in the eyes. Do not get the soap in the ears, okay? We do not want to add a bunch of water to the ears because you could have problems with that. If you do, here's a video to clean them. After you get the pet all scrubbed down from head to toe, we want to make sure we rinse them very well. If your pet doesn't like to have its head rinsed off and it starts to shake, kind of hold the ears down. It helps. Or if you can hold just one ear, it just helps to keep them from shaking so much. You're going to notice more brown stuff and you're going to notice some fleas. They'll be dead. They're teeny tiny little specks, but you're going to notice them because you're looking for them. After your pet is all washed and rinsed, this is the time to use your flea comb when your dog is wet and in the tub. Just comb, see what you find. You might not find anything. You might find, as you comb, a bunch of fleas along here. If you do, they should be dead. Time to get out of the tub. Every dog's favorite time.
Maybe not yours though. You're gonna want a lot of towels, one to put on the floor so nobody slips, including you. And you're gonna want a couple dry towels. Get them all clean, make sure you get between those toes. Make sure you get under the ear flaps so that no water stays in there. Okay, now that Fido's washed, let's get your house cleaned. Cause they're in your environment. You're gonna wanna get your vacuum out. Yeah, I'm sorry, you get to vacuum. The more you vacuum, the more fleas you're gonna pick up. The more fleas you pick up, the less fleas that are in your environment. Vacuuming, you're gonna suck up those fleas into your vacuum. The first thing you wanna do after you're done vacuuming is you wanna take that vacuum cup outside. You wanna get it right out of your home. You do not wanna empty that in your house trash. Fleas are opportunistic. They're gonna jump right back out that trash can the minute you open it or out of your vacuum if you didn't empty the cup. So that's a super important step. Vacuum, 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 everything. Carpet, hardwood, the vents, the couch, your bed, everywhere, dog beds. And you have a cat, you're gonna to wanna to vacuum the cat tree. Dogs and cats usually have different species of fleas, but fleas need blood meal. And if your cat is walking by, he's a victim. Let me be clear on this vacuuming thing. A robotic vacuum cleaner like Roomba, not gonna cut it in this situation. You're gonna to need to get down and dirty and vacuum everything. So. 90% of fleas live where? In your environment. Why? They're undisturbed, it's warm and cozy, and anytime they're hungry, they got a meal walking by. You're gonna wanna wash all your bedding, all your couch pillows and blankies and all that, you're gonna wanna wash. Anywhere the pet goes or sits or sleeps needs to be deep cleaned. With a vacuum, suck up all the fleas, flea poop, larva, all that stuff. Cause if you don't, we're just gonna hatch. And then you get to do this process again and again and again and again and again. The more you clean, the faster you get rid of them. Fleas are a three month problem. So the more you vacuum, the quicker you get rid of them. Moving on to how on earth are we gonna kill them? Let's dig right into it and figure that out. Some stuff is good for, for dogs. Some stuff is good for cats. Some stuff is not good for dogs and not good for cats. You need to read the label. Also, some of that stuff is not good for birds, fish, pregnant people children. I mean, I don't want to risk anybody's family. So let's read the label. As far as a natural deterrent for fleas, a lot of people say diatomaceous earth is good because it cuts the flea. Fleas are very hardy and if anything were to cause them pain, they're just going to hop away from it. My very, very favorite product for getting rid of fleas in your home is called Knockout. This is a Verback product. You can get it on Chewy.com. It kills flea infestations and I'll show you the top. The top looks like this. It has a spray thing. You put your finger here and it broadcasts it out. Anyway, this product is not good for birds, fish, pregnant people. There's like a whole list on the back that you should read. This is something that you need to take in consideration. But fleas, fleas can cause a lot of stuff too. If finding fleas in your environment wasn't bad enough, here's a happy little list of all the things that could go wrong with having fleas living in your environment. They can affect you, they can affect your pet, they can make you very sick, and they can make your pet very sick, resulting in more vet visits. You need to weigh your odds. This product though is my by far favorite product. Working in the vet clinic, that's what we use. We use that product every day. So it kills fleas and it also kills biting lice and mites and spiders kills a lot of things. There's tons of things out in the farm stores and in Walmart and Meyer that say, this is great for your pet, it kills fleas. Some of that stuff is great. Some of that stuff is terrible. And you cannot mix a dog product and a cat product interchangeably. That is a no-no, absolutely do not do that. Cats are so sensitive to things. Cats will die if you put the wrong product on them. Okay, so breaking the flea life cycle. I recommend multiple products from the vet. There are chewables, there are collars, there are drops to go on their back. I'll talk your ear off about them because I love them. And I feel like so many people have given them a bad rap. Oh, don't use that because it's gonna cause a seizure. If your pet was gonna have a seizure, it's gonna have a seizure no matter what. On the label box from the vet, it says, do not use if, and there's a list. If they're old, if they're obese, if they have health conditions, if they have all kinds of things. So don't get me on my soapbox. I'm, I'm jumping off that. I do not recommend a product called Pet Armor or Hearts. Those are my two that I'm gonna toss out there. Those are not my favorite. I've seen so many bad things happen from those products. There's so many options out there nowadays to get rid of fleas. So 
before you just go pick something, I recommend you talk to your vet about it. Often your vet will have products in the veterinary office that are great, will work wonderful for your pet, and usually there's a deal. So if you're gonna buy something, ask, is there a coupon, is there a rebate, is there a deal with this? Often you can get it cheaper from your vet's office than you can from Chewy. So I hope you learned a lot today and let me teach you a little bit about fleas and their life cycle and how terrible they are. Please do not ever feel bad if your pet gets fleas. It does not mean you are dirty. It means that your pet got fleas. So it's not a big deal, just gotta treat it. There are products that you can give year round to make sure that your pet does not ever get fleas. That is what I do. It's your pet and you want the very best for them. So why wouldn't you? I also want to say thank you so much for watching my channel. I hope you got a lot out of this today. And if you have any questions or comments or you want my input, leave it below. I just want you to remember that I'm here for you. You're here for your pet. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.